Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. Today's topic is a how would you model that? Uh, this punch was sent to me uh, from a customer and they were asking how would you go about modeling these you know, angled tapered faces down here at the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna show. So let's take a look on how we can do this. So this is the drawing I'm gonna be basing the part off of. Uh, first thing we can see is we're in millimeters, um, but there's a couple key things here. So we can see the overall height is 85, the overall width is 24.04. We've got some full round fillets, um, the overall thickness. But kind of the key thing here are the two angles. So we can see this 60 degree taper and then this 70 degree taper. Uh, so I'm gonna be showing how we can go about doing that. So let's start by creating a new design. And the first thing I wanna make sure is we're in the right units. So I'm gonna change from inch into millimeters and then I'll create a new component and let's just call it punch. We'll start by creating a sketch on the front plane, and I like to create a center rectangle. Kind of keeps everything symmetric. So we know the overall width and height. So the width is that 24.04, and the overall height was 85 millimeters. I'll go ahead and start by creating that hole in the middle here. So I'm gonna use the circle command, and I'm gonna purposely click off to the side and then I can type in the diameter of 5.1. Now I wanna make it perfectly lined up with the center of this rectangle, and that's why I started out with a center rectangle. So I'm gonna use the horizontal vertical constraint. I'll select the center of the circle and this point here, and it's gonna make those two points in line with each other. Okay, now it's still showing that it's not fully constrained, so I'll go ahead and add a dimension in here. And off of the drawing, that's a distance of nine millimeters. Okay, now the next thing I wanna do is to create that curved bottom part. So once again, I'll use the circle. I'll go ahead and place it kind of randomly, but you'll notice that it's asking for a diameter. And according to the drawing, it's a radius of 16.75. Uh, if I right mouse click, you'll notice I don't have any options for changing to a radius. So I'm just going to go ahead and place that circle on there. Then I'll use the sketch dimension command, click on the circle, and again you'll notice it's showing it in diameter. But this time if I right mouse click, I do have the option to select radius. So I'll go ahead and place that, and the radius is supposed to be 16.75, and it created a much larger circle for me. And just like before, I want this to be perfectly centered or in line, so I'm gonna do the horizontal vertical, select those two points, and now they're in line with each other. The last thing is I want the bottom of this circle to be a tangent to that edge, so I'll use the tangent constraint, click on the circle, click on that edge, and we can see we now have that circle the correct size and in the correct location. I like to move some of these dimensions so I can see that everything looks good. And everything's fully constrained, so I'll go ahead and finish my sketch. Now I could trim the circle, you know, the parts that I don't need, but the fact is you don't need to do that on a lot of your sketches. In fact, if I click on that profile there and that profile there, you'll notice I'm getting the exact shape that I wanted and I didn't need to trim all of these extra lines. So I've pre-selected the profiles. I'll right mouse click and say extrude. Now, once again, I, I could drag, you know, in one direction, but this part is pretty symmetric and I kind of created it symmetrically. So I'll even do the uh, extrusion or the thickness to be symmetric. So I'm going to change it from one side to symmetric. And when I do that, I get this measurement option, half length and whole length. So I'm going to change it to whole length 
and we know that the whole length, or thickness in this case, is 2.28. And so you can see that it's keeping the sketch in the middle, and it's extruding equal distance both directions for a total thickness of 2.28. And I'll go ahead and say OK, and we now have our basic shape. So now we want to create the point uh, at the bottom. So let's go ahead and pre-select our two edges. I'll right mouse click and say chamfer. Now by default, it's usually set to equal distance, which is like a 45 degree. So if I start to drag, we can visually see what that looks like. But according to the drawing, we need to be um, like at a 60 degree angle. And this is, you know, basically equal distance in both directions or 45 degrees. So I'm going to change the type from equal distance to distance and angle. Now this allows me to type in a distance and type in an angle. And we can actually visually see that if I start to drag this um, little uh, circle here, you can kind of see how it's changing the angle from 45 degrees to whatever we want this to be. So the total is uh, 60 degrees, so I'm going to change this to be 30 degrees. Um, that way it's 30 degrees plus 60 degrees is 90, right? So I'm going to set that to 30 degrees, and according to the drawing, uh, the distance is 1.95, and we can see that gives us a very sharp point right there and I'll say OK. Now, according to the drawing, we also have this 70 degree angle. And you might think, oh, you could use the chamfer command for that. But there's really not something that we could chamfer here. If I tried to chamfer these two edges, I'm not going to get uh, the result that you would expect. So you kind of see how it's trying to go up the edge here and all kind of stuff. So what we want to basically do is rotate this little segment of face right here. But you'll notice that it's all connected to this face right here. So here's the tip. I'm going to basically create my own face right here. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch on this side face. I'll just kind of zoom up here a little bit. And I'll create a line from the end of, of this angle to the end of that angle. And now you can see we've kind of created this triangular face. Well, we created a sketch, right? Now, um, this is still all one face, but we need to basically separate it. So it's in two separate faces. So to do that, I'm going to use the split body command. So I'm going to say split body. What's the body to split? What's my splitting tool? I'm just going to click on that edge right there. And you can see it created this big red disk. And it's going to use that edge. And it's basically slicing all the way through the model. And that's because this extend splitting tools is turned on. Also, watch what happens in the bodies folder. Right now, there's one. As soon as I say OK, we now have two separate bodies that we could turn on or off, which now has basically made this its own face. And same thing over on the other side. This is its own face. Then what we're going to do is basically just rotate this face around an axis, which is this edge. So I'm going to go into the Move command. And we can see the Move type or the Move object. Sometimes it defaults to bodies. If it does, make sure you're set to Faces. And then I like to change the Move type to Rotate, because that allows me to select an axis. Right now it's asking for what are we going to move, so I'm going to click on that face there. Then it's asking for the axis. I'll go ahead and select this edge, and I get this little uh, circular rotation, and I'm just going to drag it so you can kind of visually see what's happening here. So we're rotating that face around that axis. 
Well, we need an angle, a total angle of 70. So I'm going to say minus 35. Because if I do 35 on one side and 35 on the other, that would be a total for 70. So I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And we've just rotated that vertical face to be at an angle. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on this other side. I'll say move, face. We'll select the axis. Start to rotate so you can kind of visually see. If I click in here, it remembers my last command. So I'll go ahead and say minus 35 and say OK. And we've now kind of created that tapered area for the punch. Now these are still two separate bodies and I want to start working with them as one. So I'm going to combine them back together. So under the modify menu, there's the combine command or you might actually have it up here in the main menu. So I'm going to say combine my target, the tool. I want to make sure the operation is set to join. And then I'll just say OK, and we're back to one body. Now I'm going to round over the edges. So let's go ahead and go into fillet. And hopefully you know this tip. You can do a regular fillet, but if I click on this uh, pull down right here, there's one called full round fillet. So I'm going to select full round fillet. I'm just going to hover over this face and you'll notice that it kind of turns to a, a lighter gray and then we can see there's a blue face and there's actually a blue face on both sides. What that's basically saying is round this face and tangentially touch the blue faces. And let me show you what I mean. If I just click right there, you can see it rounded that face and it's tangential with the, the two blue faces that were highlighted. So I'll do the same thing over here. I'll just add another selection set, kind of get near this face right here. Click and we get that full round. Now, if I look down here, it went all the way down this edge, but it couldn't wrap around the corner. So we're going to go ahead and do a smaller fillet. Um, in this case, uh, on this little edge right here. Oops, let me make sure I select the edge. Oh, notice it's set to full round fillet. I'm going to change it back to regular fillet. And then I can select this edge and this other pointed edge right there. And these are just a small radius of one. And I'll go ahead and select that edge and that edge. Say OK. And we are now done with our punch. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.